Um, one of the glorious things about Doctor Who is how it can be all things, not just in terms of where the story may be set that particular week or um, the particular challenges that are facing our heroes, but also in terms of tone. I don't know of any other programme that is able to do light and dark so effectively, comedy and drama and all the things in between, and not just do it on a week-by-week -week basis, but by an episode-by-episode -episode basis. Um, and this is, I think, the episode that best encapsulated that, certainly so far and possibly um, throughout the whole of Doctor Who, I, I can't think of another episode that swings so wildly between extremes. Um, and I think that might have something to do with why the Romans, I've not, I, obviously I've not done my reading up yet, because I always do that at the end, it's always part of the pleasure. But um, the Romans always had a peculiar reputation, empirically thinking, um, because I, I suppose, you know, a lot of the Hartnell stories have, but, um, but the simple fact is that this episode, which I think is class, manages to swing so wildly from broad farce, I mean proper, proper farce, um, men chasing women around, uh, tumbling over beds, um, mistaken identity and, and people running into a room and then out of a room and not being where they're supposed to be or and not just being moments after. We had a touch of it in the last episode, but uh, poor old Barbara is in comes in for it to, to an awful extent. We have the first com I, and I, there must be another one, but the first comedy death in Doctor Who. He said with his Pisco Sour Hour mug. Um, that's Pisco Sour Hour music fans. Um, um, the first comedy death in Doctor Who. We have a a really bold villainous central performance from Nero whose name, again, escapes me as an actor, um, who goes from... Well, who manages to do that sort of infantile bad guy thing whereby at one moment it is funny and a bit pathetic and on the other moment, but because they have such power, um, can immediately launch into being incredibly dangerous. Um, Ian encapsulates the horror of this story. He spends most of the time in a prison cell and the little time he doesn't in a prison cell he's fighting the guy who we've come to know and like and is his mate in this story. Um, Barbara gets the run around from Nero. And, don't do that guy. Barbara gets the run around from Nero and has to uh, avoid his amorous advances and also avoid, avoid his wife. Um, Vicky gets embroiled with the poisoner uh, and the doctor plays a game of the Emperor's New Clothes with a... Um, uh, loot, not loot, or oh, whatever it is. But essentially, what I'm saying is this story's bonkers from one scene to the next. You're not entirely sure whether we're in jeopardy, um, uh, whether we're supposed to be laughing. There's a bit in a sauna with a sword, which is, you know, good physical comedy with Nero popping inside the doctor with this sword. And it's just great stuff. Danny Spooner is clearly a bit mental. Uh, and I really like that. It really suits the programme. Hartnell's having a ball. Jacqueline Hill. Uh, Lib said that she thinks Jacqueline Hill is gorgeous, beautiful, and this story makes use of that. Nero falls for her, uh, and she's certainly an elegant lady. Maureen O'Brien is going around being all things a young Doctor Who companion should be. Wide-eyed and chipper and poisoning Roman emperors and potentially changing the course of time. And poor old Ian's locked in a prison cell and ends up having to fight for his life. So... Really, this is a story. I mean, this is the sort of Doctor Who story. If you were to come up with a playlist of Doctor Who stories, there's lots of different ways of doing it. You could come up with the best story of each Doctor, or the you know um, big epoch-making stories that sort of inform the mythology of Doctor Who. But if you were going for um, stories that give a sense of the breadth and depth of it tonally as a programme, then you wouldn't go far wrong with starting off with the Romans. Uh, I'm not entirely sure where you'd follow it after that. Deadly Assassin, something like that. So, so you know, the other way. Um, so, yeah, fabulous. What can I say? See you next time.